Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Mac. This is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen over the past week. Links to everything discussed can be found in the description below, so let's get on with it. This week we hear about PU cataclysmic events, more details on shopping, plus you can try Star Citizen for free. If you are still to sign up to the RSI website, please use my referral code as shown on screen or in the description and you'll receive 5,000 United Earth credits which can be spent in the Voyager Direct Store for your ships, your character or whatever you choose. You don't have to spend anything to sign up, it's only once you pledge that I'll be granted an RP point which will get me some little rewards in the future. So kicking off as usual with the 10 for the Chairman, first question being will our ships have the Ark Star Map built in? And he says you will have a Skyline app on your Moby Glass. It's unavailable at the moment. And this will be similar to the web-based star map. The Karak, for example, will have a 3D nav map to manipulate. And better nav computers will have better features. It's a key feature that once Stanton is expanded, it'll come to fruition. Very cool. Can't wait for that. Next question. In the verse, when we buy ships from a dealer, will there be an enclosed area to try before we buy? And he says it's a very good idea to allow you to maybe jump into the sim pod, like in your hangar, and try out that particular ship in some sort of simulation arena. He hadn't thought about it, but it looks like he might incorporate that somehow. Third question, when I leave a moving ship, I should be moving at the same speed as the ship, perhaps to do some EVA repairs while moving. Will this ever be an option? Now, Chris says that this is constantly on debate. They want to cap the player velocity so it doesn't become too big, but you should inherit the parent object velocity. Now, EVA currently is, I think, normal speed of 15 meters a second, and your boost speed, he says, is between 50 to 100 meters a second, he wasn't quite sure. Stopping someone at a greater speed would potentially hurt or kill them, so maybe they would allow you to come out at the same speed as the ship and then begin to slow down to the regular speed. He doesn't think you'll have the ability to open the airlock doors while in cruise mode. Precision mode, definitely. SCM, possibly. So the next question is, will repairing on the fly be something you'll need to get good at, or will it consist of just pressing F where the game tells you to? And Chris explains that as a player, a simple method would be a med pen if you are just healing yourself. This would give you some sort of like quick stamina or asteroid boost to help you continue until you have time to do a thorough examination. But it would require some skill for more in-depth healing. Things like targeting and applying is what he, he, he mentioned. It's very similar to the ship repair system. You'll have certain amounts of skill needed to conduct repairs on ships of a greater level. But then the small single repairs, like simple repairs, will require much less skill and pretty much be easy for most people. Question after that is, what plans are for launch and recovery of single seat fighter craft from capital ships? Now he says there's not going to be a catapult system like we see in Battlestar Galactica. Currently on the Idris, as we've seen in the Morotor, the blast shields sort of come up from the floor on the flight deck and allow the ships to push off. It will be similar to the Bengal video we saw a long, long while ago when the first Kickstarter campaign was started, where the, the ship will lift up from the deck and then accelerate out. When it comes into land, you would need to match the velocity of the ship you are landing on and do the same thing. It is very, very tricky, he says. There's lots of cases of people smashing into walls as they are testing it now. Auto landing will really help. Anyway, next question. Will there be cataclysmic events in the PU? And he says, yes, definitely going to be cataclysmic events or acts of God. It will be game mastered, so it will be them that are creating this. They will create little pockets of chaos around the world, things like famine or civil war, which in turn will create the events and missions for players. And also he did mention that things like space stations and even planets could eventually be erased. Most exciting. I really can't wait to see how that evolves. So next question, what is the reasoning behind creating more concept ships when other ships like the Lancer variants and the Redeemers are not flight ready or potentially hangar ready? And he says the people building the ships are in different areas. You've got conceptors and designers. They're all at their own stage of designing ships. Once the universe is running, he says they will want to have new models of ships, uh, maybe new weapons, some real estate. It's going to be like the real world where things will constantly evolve. The goals for the games is that he wants to keep a steady supply of things so that people will have things to gain while in the persistent universe. So a way of, uh, you know, something to spend your money on. Now they're pretty steadily bringing ships into the hangar and flight. They're still fleshing out ships needed for the persistent universe to feel alive so they need that variety and they will continue to concept more if they don't do concepts the modelers won't have things to create the goal is to constantly bring content even after the game is finished so that it keeps us playing it second to last question will hangers ever be able to be made bigger in time or will renting hangar space ever be an option and he says longer term you can rent more he says you may want to have your ships 
spread out across the verse as well so you can have hangers in different planets because the, the problem is the you can only switch your ship in the location they are set so if you have 20 ships in one part of the verse and you're at the other end of this verse then it's going to be a long way to go back and get them you can have people fly them to you so you can pay someone to bring them to you be it player or ai but it would make sense to have them not all in one place so as you may one day be able to buy extra rooms or space in your hangers but it's not likely that your hangar will just be a, as, I, as far as the eye can see there's going to be a limit to it so final question will it be possible for a really skilled coordinated team of players to circumvent security for nefarious purposes maybe stage a terrorist attack and he says there will be places where it'll be just impossible to do so things like terror where their security is just exceptional but other places where, where security is a little less then you may be able to shut down security systems and yes cause terrorist attacks or cause some mayhem space stations with security could be taken out and potentially there could be like a heist where a ship carrying gold bullion would set off from a particular place and you need to be extremely coordinated to take this down this creates jobs for players needed as security and also ai needed as security but if you can pull it off then the reward will be very very high Again, Terra and Earth will be pretty safe. They may confiscate your weapons when you go into the system, but places like the Nix or the Levski system will be less secure and just have their own local police. Anyway, some really cool questions and answers there. Let me know what you think. So on to Around the Verse. This week, Sandy and Ben say they are currently testing 2.4 builds with all the content that they want to put in. There's a free fly which started on Friday in honor of PAX East. And also all the military ships are returning for sale, the single seat fighters I believe. If you got fooled by the April Fool's intergalactic delivery food delivery service thing and you click that button, you will receive a $5 voucher to use off your next purchase from the RSI website. Also, the RSI Prospector, which is the small mining ship, is on sale next Friday, the 22nd, and it'll be $140 as the first concept sale price. A little pricey for me, unfortunately. So, news from around the verse, starting with CIG in LA. They are working to get the Reliant flight ready. Now, if that's coming to 2.4, then I have no idea what the hangar ready ship is. We'll have to wait and see. They're also refactoring component system to work with the new item system 2.0. They're getting flight balanced, changing up quantum travel and EVA, getting it ready for 2.4 also. So Austin CIG, they are talking about the Olasar updates, the Port Olasar updates. It's going to have a new commercial Galleria area for shops. They're rebranding some shops fictionally because obviously a lot of the shops we, have, we know of at Art Court in Area 18 are local to that area and not Crusader. It's now in grey box and final art stage you'll have a new elevator very exciting the new flight suit is done they've updated the Santa ball costume to be the sort of new undersuit and this will be sold from cubby blast in different colors the old light heavy and medium armor is also ready and will be sold in crusader as well you'll have the ability to switch between civilian clothing and armor loadouts so in your sort of easy hub area there'll be a valet clothing storage kind of like a locker near the airlocks and before leaving you'll have to access the locker and swap between the two and then when you come back you can land your ship go through the airlock and then take your armor off and hang around in your civilian clothing also port modification ui is in place it'll be a moby glass app and it's the first way of swapping out your loadouts your ship loadouts using your moby glass most excited foundry 42 in the uk we met a new qa member called mickey oliver if you are interested in what she has to say do check the links foundry 42 in frankfurt they are at phase two of the player health system they're working on a pirate base for the persistent universe as well as reputation 2.0 so we'll see some changes coming in there i hope on the ai side they've got interactors up and running they're looking into interacting subsumption into combat they're pushing the procedural planets they say terrain is looking very good and on the physics side they're fixing projectiles to work with local physics grids it was on to lawmakers guide to the galaxy and it was the theron system with dave haddock again really worth watching these so do check the links so i won't explain everything that has gone on in them because i'll be doing my own system guides most valuable post goes to hashkaha for his weekly star citizen screenshots very cool screenshots would be ideal for a computer wallpaper and the atv fast forward this week is the eva thruster sounds i shall play that so you can all
So on Reverse the Verse this week, they started by mentioning they, the designers kicked off two ships that they just cannot mention yet. They've also updated the Ursa Rover. They are thinking heavily about rovers right now, which is very cool. Much excitement about these rovers. Final concept art now for the Prospector, which is on a concept sale on the 22nd of April. We've got the first two look devs of the Buccaneer. They've worked on the making of book and reviewed the new org features. So straight on to Q&A, what is the best way to get into the PTU? And they say there's lots of factors to it. Obviously the issue council participation, if you are reporting bugs constantly in detail, not just this is a bug, this is a bug, then you will be entered into the PTU quicker than most people. You've got to stay active and keep contributing to help them basically, but it isn't a walk in the park. It's actually quite a difficult thing to do to be to give a detailed bug report. So do bear that in mind if you are interested. Also playing the PTU builds helps, but not quite as much as participating in the issue council. Next question is when can we get info on the Constellation Aquila? Now they have actually been talking about this this week and they're scheduling the variant soon. The Aquila will likely be the first variant, but unfortunately they didn't give us a time or a date ad normal. Next question is, will the Dragonfly fit inside the Cutlass or the Freelancer? And they say not really, more depends on whether it will once it's built and complete. It's not intended to, but you know, we can always try. So next question, can we expect a Holotable rework? And they say yes. Absolutely. How is the Polaris coming together? You say very well. They have had some directions from artists and they have picked the one that they like. Very excited to see this. Question after that is, will Orion owners get a MISC Prospector to test? And they say they're not sure if the Prospector will go in before the Orion. The Orion is still being developed. I would have thought it the MISC Prospector would do because you would have thought they need that ship quickly to test out the mining. But theoretically, they said they will if it comes out first. Next question is, what is with the NDA or the Ikoti NDA PTU thing, which we've seen going around the places? Certain people have been invited to a NDA or non-disclosure agreement to test early PTU builds. Now they say it's a small NDA strike team looking at some less stable earlier builds, in particular Squadron 42 stuff. This is so that not everyone can see it because obviously some things are that buggy that it's pointless putting them out in front of other people. And it won't change the process of what they already do. Now, in my opinion, I haven't been invited, but this is because I haven't been participating that much on the issue council. I've only put up now and again. The thing is, it's not to show off. You cannot show any footage of this. And obviously, if this means that we can get the PTU builds quicker, then I'm more for it. So we'll have to wait and see what that brings. Next question is basically about VR. Is there any word on it yet? And they say it's not the priority, as we know. It won't affect everyone whereas things like procedural planets will so procedural planets is being worked on first they say they know what they need and they know what they need to do but they've just got other stuff to do first so our next question is when is the star map shipping now they are currently looking for better quality tubes to post them in they have finished the samples this week and they're hoping for may to be shipped in may second to last question will olisar be expanded in 2.4 they say they're not sure about 2.4 but it'll definitely be in the near future I really hope it does come in 2.4. It'd be nice to explore a different part of Olisar. Final question, will there be an ILS system on carriers? And yes, there will be. That was Reverse the Verse. Very short, very sweet. Let me know what you think. Also this week, we had a new Something Every Tuesday post, which I have not read yet. Another portfolio post was released as well. This week, introducing the company who brought us the Katu Al called Apoa. Or Upoa. There is a post detailing the Free Fly Week, the military ship sale in which you can pick up an Anvil Gladiator or Hornet, or the Aegis Gladius or Retaliator, plus more, so do check that out for all the deets there. And finally, the latest jump point is available for subscribers. I just want to say a big thank you to Stephen Foster, Simon Smedger, Matt Stubbs, and Josh Watson, who all became my patron this week. Thank you so much for your pledges. Just so you know, there will be no Star Citizen Sunday next week as I will be away camping until the 27th of April. Star Citizen Sunday will resume as normal on Sunday the 1st of May. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching and thank you to our subscribers. Plus a massive thank you to our patrons as you make this possible. If you like what we do and want to help us make it better, follow the link in the description to our Patreon page to learn more.